So the second type of boundary conditions that we are going to be talking about is Newman boundary conditions. So Newman boundary conditions are, for example, if I have the Poisson's equation again, let's define u at zero. Let's define the derivative at u at zero is equal to a certain value. Let's start with zero. Okay. I still define my u at 1 is equal to 0 because uh, otherwise the equation wouldn't have solution in general. I would have a, a ill-conditioned system, right? So, so, so you can solve a Poisson's equation in general with a Newman boundary condition on both sides unless my f satisfies certain conditions. And you can show that by just integrating the equation once. Um, so, so let's suppose I have a Newman boundary condition on the right and a Dirichlet boundary condition on the uh, Newman boundary condition on the left, Dirichlet con boundary condition on the right. So it, it turns out there is a natural way of enforcing the boundary condition. Instead of forcing, instead of forcing, uh, forcing the derivative of u to be 0 at the boundary, there is actually a smarter way of enforcing this boundary condition. Okay, so we can show this by the following. Let's actually start again from this equation and uh, integrate this equation with a g. So multiply this equation with g and integrate over the spatial domain. So if the strong form of the equation is satisfied, this has to be zero. Now let's start our integration by parts. So in integration by parts, remember we get a boundary term and an interior term. The boundary term is g times du dx at zero and one. And the interior term is minus, you have a negative sign, dg dx, du dx. So you take the one order of derivative from this u and put it on g. So that's what makes the requirement for differentiability weaker in the weak form. And then you still have this integration of g times f dx, right? Okay, now what you see is that if I have this boundary condition also satisfied in addition to the differential equation. What I get is that one of these boundary terms naturally disappears, right? So it disappears on the zero side and on the one side because my test function g satisfies the Dirichlet boundary condition. This also disappears. So I don't need to do anything different. I have exactly the same weak form, right? So it's curious because my weak form is going to be the same. My a is equal to the negative of integral of uh, derivative of g and derivative of x. My l is integration of g f dx. So nothing changes. But I have a different boundary condition, so I should have a different solution, right? So. So something must have changed that we might have missed. So what's the difference between this weak form, a of u g plus l g equal to zero for the zero Newman boundary condition as opposed to the same weak form for the zero Dirichlet boundary condition? Uh, basis functions can't be the same. Hmm? Again? Uh, basis functions can't be the same. What function can't be the same? The basis function. The basis function is not the same because the linear space is not the same. So in this case, my linear space X is all the U's within H1 again. That only needs to satisfy the right hand side boundary condition. So that means I can have a weak form 
and satisfy the left Newman boundary condition without enforcing it. All right. So, so basically, there for every weak form, there is a particular type of boundary condition called a natural boundary condition, that is naturally satisfied if you just don't enforce anything on the boundary. And for this equation, for example, the zero Newman boundary condition is actually the natural boundary condition for this particular weak form. All right. So if you just uh, solve the weak form without enforcing any boundary condition on the left, you automatically get that boundary condition satisfied.